Hi guys, it's John back here with another inbox review. Um, probably not going to be very hard to guess what I'm doing an inbox review on. Uh, it's an Airfix kit, but it wasn't originally an Airfix kit. This is the 72nd scale Airfix Dasso Brigitte Supria Tondar, which was, of course, the development of the Tondar 4 carrier borne French naval. Um, maritime strike aircraft. Um, it's quite appropriate that uh, the image that's in front of you is of the Argentine's naval Supra Tondar um, because this is probably the version I'm almost certainly going to be doing. Uh, there is a reason for that uh, which I'll go into the into with the inbox review it, um, in a minute. But uh, that's, a, that's an image there of, a, of an Argentine naval Dassault Brigitte Supra Tondar, which of course, uh, which they wreaked so much havoc on uh, the Royal Naval Task Force and the Falklands Crisis. We'll start by going through the in inbox boxing history. The model itself <clears throat> originated, I'll just take that off, you don't need that, originated as a Heller model. Uh, this was originally released in 1984. Um, in 172nd scale as the AMD Supra Tondard and Exocet model set. Um, it was originally a 1984 release from Heller and then of course Heller bought up um, Humbrol in 1985-86 and the 85, uh, sorry the 86 release um, was by Humbrol Heller in the as as sorry as the one seventy second scale AMD Supra Tondar um, that shows you also the type of decal sheet that you got with the Humbrol Heller kit not this not this one here not that one but this one this is the this is the marking sheet that you got with the early Humbrol and Heller models that were released in the eighties. Um, that of course changed with the Airfix and the Humbrol, sorry, the Heller release in the 90s when um, the markings incorporated the Aero Naval and Argentine navies. But the plastic is interesting as well because the plastic is white. Um, I do believe the plastic in the original 84 release was white as well. But um, <clears throat> the other interesting thing was that the model itself is supposed to come on two plastic sprues and a transparency sprue. Um, but we'll go into all of that with the inbox review because they, ha they had to change all of that layout because the FX box was smaller. This particular box, the Humbrol Heller box offering, was much, much bigger than the Airfix boxing, which you'll see in a minute. Um, so that was the 86 release. That gave way to Heller's 1990 release. Um, and as you can see, it's still following the theme with the Exocet missile um, <clears throat> featuring as the armament set fit on this kit. But in 1990, Airfix was purchased by Humbrol and Heller, Humbrol Heller Group. And Airfix, re uh, sorry, Heller reboxed the Super Tondard in the Airfix uh, boxings. And this is the subject of the model review that I'm going to be doing, the 1990 Airfix release of the Dassault Brigitte Supra Tondar in the uh, Aero Naval and the Argentine Naval Exocet missile fit. Um, that was originally released in 1990. And Airfix later, quite a lot later actually, in 2007, uh, released what was called uh, the Falklands War 25th Anniversary Collection. Um, it didn't in, include half the aircraft that uh, were involved in the Falklands War uh, because the list was endless. Um, even the aircraft that the Argentine Navy and the Argentine Air Force used uh, isn't anything like the number of aircraft that are covered in the box. But basically you've got six aircraft types. You've got the two different Harrier types, the Sea Harrier FRS Mark I and the GR3 Harrier which was the older generation GR3 Harrier, of course. You had the Dassault Brigitte Supra Tondar, 
you had the Mirage 3 EA dagger, which was just a, uh, a redeckled version of the original Mirage 3C model kit. You had the IMA Pucara, IA58, and the first generation Douglas A4 Skyhawk, which I think was revamped as the A4Q, I believe. I think it was the A4Q Skyhawk. Um, <clears throat> and those were the six kits that were included in, the, in that box set. Now this box set is actually quite difficult to get hold of now. A lot of collectors have kept hold of this kit. Um, probably because it's quite rare. It was a limited release at the time when, when Airfix released it. Uh, so that was released in 2007, obviously, which was 25 years after the Falklands War. And then in 2013... Um, <clears throat> sorry about that, the, the video is going mental. In 2013, the parent company that owns Airfix also obviously owned Heller, Heller Group. This is Hornby Limited. Um, they released the Dassault Super Tondard in both Heller boxings and new red box Airfix boxings. And they were both released in 2013, so I'm not quite. I don't think the Airfix version is still available now, but I'm pretty sure you can get the Heller variant because I'm sure it's on Heller's catalogue at the moment. So you should be able to get the Heller variant boxing, but it is the same kit as what's in the Airfix kit. The Airfix rendering, of course, was this one, um, which was released the same year in 2013. So that's the boxing history of the Airfix Humbral Heller Super Tondard offering. Uh, I'll leave you with a French um, version of the of the uh, Tondard, the Super Tondard fighter, <clears throat> and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel with a bit of luck. I'm going to peel this up a little bit. I've got a new a new video mount, and it's a bit of a nightmare to get used to because uh, sorry about this. There we go. I think I've done it. And there we go. Right. This is the kit that I'm actually reviewing today. The Airfix 1990 offering of the Dassault Brigade Supra Tondar. And it's not going to take an awful lot of time to review this kit. I'll just open the box up and have a look at the plastic parts inside and we'll go through them very quickly. And I'll go through them in exactly the same way that I, I do most of, of my... Um, inbox reviews. Just take all the plastic out there and we can go through the parts in a minute. Um, I do want to talk about the parts because I think the parts in this kit are quite nice um, and I think it's worthy for you to have a look at the parts so you can see what I mean by the fact that I think they're quite nice. <clears throat> that's all of them out there. I think that's all of them out there. There's a little transparency part in here which I haven't got out. There's another grey plastic part. There we go. Right. We'll go through the plans first. And then we'll have a look at the decals in a minute. We'll go through the plans. Nice easy plan. I've got a feeling this might be a, an Airfix photocopy. Because <laughs> it's not that clear. It doesn't look like an original, does it? So it looks like Airfix have photocopied and must have run out of some original plans to box up their kits with. Um, but basically, the plans are nice and clear, and there's a reason for that. These plans, this side, these plans are Airfix, definitely. Even the paint plan is Airfix. Um, well, to be honest with you, I'm not 100% sure on that either. I think the, the paint plan might be Hella. Um, but this this page is definitely Airfix, this page with the Dassault Supra Tondard logo at the top, the part... The kit number 03060, which is there, you can just see that. And you've got a few of the paint icons, sorry, the uh, the modelling icons at the bottom. That is all definitely Airfix. But when you turn this instruction sheet over, it becomes Hella. Obviously, because the model is originally a Hella kit. In actual fact, I think the model might originally have been a Humbrol kit, which Hella bought up when they bought Humbrol up. Um, but basically the, the, the kit builds up in four stages, with the fifth stage being the paint plan. Um, 
and the kit does not have that many parts. I think this kit will build up very, very quickly. But the method of construction that they've used to produce this kit uh, lends itself to being built quite quickly, cleanly, and probably with very little filler. Um, basically, the interior consists of an instrument panel, as you can see here. There's a decal to go on the instrument panel, a joystick. Um, and at this stage, you just put that into the base of the fuselage. You place the main wing, which is a one-piece main wing, and the jet pipe into the base of the fuselage. And then you put the splitter plates for the air intakes into the upper section of the fuselage. And then you glue the fuselage over the top of the whole assembly to produce this. And then in step, step two, you put the pilot seat in. The gun sight, which goes in there, and the two air intake lips. You're supposed to put the canopy in place, but I never put the canopy in place until I've painted the airframe. And then the tail impenage goes into place there at the back of the fuselage. And then step three, it's basically one or two aerials, the undercarriage doors, the oleos, the wheels, and what looks to me like the arrestor hook. No, sorry, it's not the arrestor hook. It looks like an aerial of some sort, which goes in the middle of the underside of the fuselage here, part five. Um, and then section four are your flaps, your air, in, uh, your air brakes with the rams, and the weapons fit. And the weapons fit is that you only have one option for the weapons fit. And the reason for that is probably because it, it's the option that most people would want to build, which is the Exocet missile. Um, and the Supra Tondar never carried two Exocets. There's a reason for that. It's because... You couldn't fit the Exocet into the middle pylon because there was no middle pylon. The Exocet missile is actually quite heavy and the aircraft would have been rendered overloaded without external fuel. <laughs> it was a bit of a complicated situation. You either had to have two fuel tanks and use the main internal gun or you fitted one Exocet missile and a fuel tank on the other side of the wing to balance the weight of the Exocet missile on the other side because you could not fit two Exocet missiles on this aircraft and have a decent range to use it as a strike platform. So the French worked out that you could use a fuel tank and a missile outload and it worked quite well. You just usually had to had to accommodate two aircraft on a strike package. <clears throat> After section four, you've got the paint plan, and the first paint plan is the Argentine paint plan, which is basically gloss white underneath and a seriously dark sea grey. Um, I would be tempted to try and use a semi-gloss, or a, it's what they call a satin finish, upper surface dark sea grey. Um, for the, upper, for the upper surfaces of the Argentine naval version. But you also have options for a French naval version. And the French naval version is a little bit more complicated to paint, but in my opinion, it's a nicer colour plan. Um, it's basically two-tone, medium sea and dark sea grey upper surfaces with a light aircraft grey underside. And the Exocet missile... And I've seen photographs that virtually every Exocet missile I've ever seen is actually gloss white. They're all gloss white. And the, the underside fuel tank is usually the same colour as the rest of the aircraft's underside. <clears throat> but the French aircraft, in my opinion, is probably a nicer looking... It would make a nicer looking model. But I want to build the Argentine kit. Um, I want to build the Argentine option. And there's two reasons for that. The first is because... I remember um, when I was about 17 years old being up all night watching the television um, when the Falklands War was on live and watching these things, or rather the results of these, these things ripping hell out of our Royal Navy in the Falklands campaign. 
And it's, it's interesting and worthy of note that the Argentines only had seven Exocet missiles that were fired against the Royal Navy, and they sank five ships with them, um, which was, yeah, quite serious, isn't it? Um, so there we go. That's, that's the two option decal options that you've got and the method of construction. So it's quite simple. There's not a huge number of um, parts to, to go through. The decal sheet, I just want to quickly go through the decal sheet because there's not a huge amount to look at here. And the first thing you might notice with this decal sheet is there's a section missing out of it. And the reason for that is because I've used the French Air and Nouvelle roundels on a different model that I've built about a year ago. And that's one of the reasons why I'm going to be building the Argentine variants because I haven't got the French naval roundels to put on the aircraft. But... To be honest with you, the reason why I use them is because I, I had a pretty good idea I was going to build an Argentine Super Atonda anyway. Um, <clears throat> I don't know why they've used these transfers. Oh yes, I do. There's a start, there's an X missing on the Argentine variant. There's an extra X look on the on the French one. Um, but the the French Aero Nouvelle markings basically a low vis they're all low vis markings and the argentine ones they look like they're high vis markings um the wing anchors they're a jet black um there's fin flashes the, these dreaded fin flashes and yeah i'm gonna have some fun i'll probably paint around those and probably cut these white sections out of the fin flash and just lay them in over the top of the paint and then all these markings here are common to both, obviously. There's a, there's a number of stencils there. There's not a huge number of stencils. But the quality of the decals, again, even though the fact that these were from 1990, the quality of them is pretty reasonable. I don't think they've been made by Cartograph. They just don't have that sort of quality of decal about them. But they don't look too bad. And the carrier film, yeah, it is a bit apparent, but I don't think it's that bad. I think they'll probably apply quite nicely. So that's the decal sheet. Not really a serious issue there. And I think I think they're, they're going to be quite good. Now, <clears throat> before I go through the parts, if you buy a Humbrol Heller example of this model, the chances are you're going to have all the parts on two plastic sprues and a transparency sprue. And the reason for that is, is because the sprues are quite large and the large sprues fit in the box. But if you buy an Airfix variant of this kit, you can't fit the large sprues into the box. So what often happens is, is that they're broken up at the manufacturer, um, placed into the smaller box, and you end up with, I think it's five, there's one, two... Uh, three, four, five sprues. But you've also got three large plastic parts, which also are loose in the box. They're always loose in the box. There's a few other parts here which are loose in the box, but they should really be on the sprue. So, you know, and we'll go through the loose parts first. Um, transparencies this is a part of the kit where lots of people like me to go over the transparencies that's the forward um, bulletproof windshield there and in between my fingers which is amazing that it's still there and I've seen it that's the forward bulletproof glass there you can actually see all my fingerprints through that the quality of that plastic part is really good the frame is really good that will paint up beautiful uh, this little part here, I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it on the video. I think you can, actually. That is actually the in transparent gun sight, and that should have been attached to the sprue, but it's loose in the box. Um, and the rest of the canopy, you can see it's, it's really reasonable quality. I mean, it's not like an aftermarket part, but it is pretty good. And I think you'll see most of the lack of, the lack of detail that there is inside the the cockpit of this kit but that part is quite nice and I'll put I'll put my finger underneath there so you can see that you can actually see my fingerprints through that canopy quite easily it's quite clear it's quite crystal clear actually and 
there's no sinkholes or problems with it whatsoever. So the transparency parts on this kit are very good. Um, that's the jet pipe. Again, it's quite clearly and nicely molded. There's no dicks. There's no um, what I call dents in it. There's no issues with that pipe whatsoever. So that will that will come out nice. That's one of the halves of the under wing fuel tank, and you've got um, is that two. You've got one air in, uh, one air brake here. There is another air brake in here somewhere. Oh, well, there it is. Whoops, I keep knocking this video. I'm sorry, lads. Um, <clears throat> that's the other air brake there. A little bit of um, little tab there. You'll have to be removed. But basically, the parts, um, and this is a feature of a lot of Humbrol and Hella kits, especially Humbrol kits, the parts are absolutely flash free. I mean, have a look at the detail on this wing. The detail on this wing is really quite incredible. And here's a real shock. This kit was originally released in 1984, and it's got recessed panel lines. Yeah, you heard it right the first time, recessed panel lines. The, um, the, the ailerons and the flaps are separate. The slats, they're all recessed. Uh, there's a bit of a, a bit of a tab of plastic I'll have to be removed there, but not really an issue. Um, there's a couple of tabs on it here, but that part is relatively flash free. There's a little bit of flash on this corner edge here, you can see there, but that's nothing really. I mean, to be honest with you, I'm not really that bothered by flash. I always find flash means the parts are definitely all molded correctly. Now, the top of the fuselage, I'll show you the top of the fuselage first of all, again. And this is interesting because the wings are recessed, but the fuselage have raised panel lines. <laughs> it's like you can't win, can you? Um, but they are nicely and very finely moulded. Hoping that's going to focus. Is that going to focus nice? They're really nicely rendered on that upper fuselage half. And then when you go to the lower fuselage half, we're going back to recess panel lines again. And even the fact that the arrestor is moulded into the part, it's really nicely rendered. It's focusing up. I was hoping it was going to focus for you, but it's not going to, is it? That's really nicely rendered, and that part is really, really good quality. I'm really pleased um, with the the way in which this kit has been molded, and I think it will it will build and paint up really nice. The uh, the sprues they don't carry many parts. Each sprue um, usually has around about seven or eight parts. The jet pipe was supposed to go into this bit here, um, and that's the under surface, or is it the? No, that's the upper surface of the um, of the underwing fuel tank, and then there you've got your two flaps which go on the wings, obviously, and that's the, uh, your tail plane. Again, that's really nicely rendered with uh, recessed panel lines. That's a real shocker. I wasn't expecting that, and that, I think, is one of the rams for the air intakes. Um, again, it's not going to focus properly, but that's one of the rams. Um, so that's one of the sprues. The second sprue here is the one that carries the Exocet missile, and I believe it's pylon. Um, and again, those parts are really nice, very, very nicely rendered. Um, it's a nicely, nicely moulded kit. Um, sprue 3, which carries two of the undercarriage main oleo doors, and that's all it carries <laughs> by the look of it. Uh, again, they're, they're nicely moulded with no flash, no problems, no issues. I'm very happy with that. That's the main tail plane what a lot of people call the horizontal stabiliser. It's actually called an all-moving elevon because the whole thing moves like this on the tailplane. Um, and it's a tailplane and elevator built in. So you don't have elevators that move, although this, the Supra Tondar did have separate elevons at the end, but they really acted as tabs 
when the aircraft was coming into land because like all um, aircraft that have tails mounted on their fins you have to have an awful lot of moving surfaces on the tailplane to get it to operate properly when the aircraft's running at low speed with a high angle of attack. Um, the fourth sprue is this one with the air intake splitter plates, which uh, they're quite nice and clean. Um, you've got the air intake lips there, which again are quite nice and clean, and the pilot seat. Not much to write home about there, but it looks all right, doesn't it? You know, no pilot in this kit, remember. Um, and sprue five, which has all your oleos, nose wheel, and main wheels. And there's the instrument panel there, which obviously hasn't got any dials on it because you've got a decal to go on there. There are your main wheels, which have some unusual wheel hubs. The nose wheel gear looks quite nicely molded. Um, no flash on any of these parts. Main oleo legs there, they're very good. There's a few aerials there at the front. They go on the underside of the um, forward fuselage. And there's undercarriage rams and I believe air intake, uh, air brake rams. And that, I think, is the joystick that goes inside the fuselage cockpit. So the parts. <laughs> I want to say something about the parts because I'm really surprised. The parts, and I mean, look at the underside of this fuselage. The underside of the fuselage, I, I've, I've built a, quite a few jet aircraft models in 72nd scale. And the underside of that fuselage is absolutely beautiful. I just can't get over that. The quality of the moulding of this kit is really, really crisp and it's really good quality. Um, it's not something that I would have expected to have ended up with from a kit, not only that was a 1984 release, but was also a Humbrol kit originally. Originally the kit, uh, no sorry it wasn't, it was originally a Heller model. Uh, it was originally released by Heller in 1984. Now, Heller's mouldings, are they're not reputed to be terrible, but, you know, I've never actually had a kit where the mouldings of the Heller model are actually terrible. But what I have found is that they don't tend to be that accurate. Um, I can remember building a Mark IIc Heller Hurricane. And it was so bad, after I finished building it, I threw it away. It was dreadful. Um, it wasn't dreadful. It was the cockpit canopy that was dreadful. The cockpit canopy was it was just too big, and it just made it look like a caricature, it made the Hurricane model look like a caricature. But this particular kit, the Super Tondard model, the moulding on it looks really, really good. It looks relatively accurate, um, and I'm really looking forward to bashing this kit out and getting it built and finished and. And it's it's a model subject that I've I mean I, I I've always quite liked French um, jet aircraft. I've always found that the, the French jets they tend to be quite well designed. They tend to be quite sleek and very very seriously looking war machines. And the Super Tondard is no exception. It's a really nice looking, really robust looking jet aircraft, and. I'm very much looking forward to building this kit and um, getting the finished result. Um, so that's that's the parts. That's the inbox review over. I just want to quickly go over the um, the model the model um, information so that people can have uh, an informed idea of what they're they're getting into, uh, how much the costs and stuff and everything else. Um, the the model review is on the Airfix. Dasso Brigitte Super Tondard in 172nd scale. Release date was 1990 and the models released in Series 3. The kit consists of 40 grey parts and 3 transparent parts on 5 grey sprues, but that's only 2 in the Humbrol or Heller boxings and 1 clear plastic sprue, totaling 43 parts in all. The kit has decals for 2 variants 
the French Air Naval and the Argentine Navy. And there are a number of other kits available of the Supra Tondard which might be worthy of note. Um, in 172nd scale, uh, there's a company called Sunny Tri S, which I don't know a huge amount about. I've only seen the boxing of the Sunny Tri S kit. Um, and I don't, as I said, I don't really know an awful lot about it, but the kit is about, it's quite rare, it's quite difficult to get hold of. Um, but also, Academy Minicraft did a version of this kit in 72nd scale which they also sold the moulds to, to Italeri. So the Italeri and the Academy Minicraft 172nd scale Supra Tondar are both the same kit. But you can also get this model in 148th if you fancy building something a bit more impressive. And that's offered by three different boxings, but four companies. Airfix and Heller have released a 48th scale version of the Supra Tondard. Um, and it is quite easy to get a hold of. Uh, I, I don't know too much about the model. I've not actually seen the moulds, I've not seen the parts. But um, if the 72nd scale model is anything to go by, I think it will probably build up quite nice and quite accurate. But there are two other companies which produce a 48 scale Supra Tondard. One of them is called Hawk, and the other is called Kinetic. Um, and I'm going to be honest with you, according to all the reviews online, the build reviews um, and the inbox reviews that I've seen online, the best of all of the 72nd and 48 scale offerings is the Kinetic kit, but it ain't cheap. Um, the costs of these models, in 72nd scale the kits offered by Academy and Itelleri, they go from about 5 to 12 quid. The Airfix and Heller models, they go from about 7 to 15 pound. I have no idea how much the Sunny Trias kit goes for. I've never seen one on any of the social, uh, sorry, not the, the, on any of the sales media sites whatsoever. And I've never seen any information as to how you can get hold of it or how much it costs and what it's like. I know nothing about it whatsoever, but I do know it is available and it's quite rare. The 48 scale models, the Humbrol, sorry, the Heller and Airfix offerings, you can get it as cheap as 7, 10, but it usually goes for 15 to 22 pound. The Kinetic kit is between 20, sorry, the Hawk kit is about 22 to 28 pound. Um, and the Kinetic kit, I've seen it as cheap as 33 quid. And if you can get it for 33 quid, you're doing really well because the going price is between 70 and 80 pound. Um, and you usually have to get it from somewhere, you have to, usually have to import it from America or from the Far East. First impressions of the Airfix model. The kit has really nice mouldings and it's apparently a pretty good fit. But, and this is a big but, the aircraft only has one weapons fit. That's the drop tank on the port pylon and the Exocet missile on the starboard pylon, which fortunately covers both the French and Argentine Navelle versions, um, which they were the, the very common weapons fit for both these variants um, in, in both these navies. The kit also looks a little basic and belies its humbral Heller origins with only 43 parts. But I must admit, I am impressed by the quality of the parts and the fact that a lot of the parts have embossed, uh, sorry, have um, recessed panel lines. I'm really shocked. I was not expecting a 1984 offering to have recessed panel lines. So that's the model review, lads. Um, don't forget to give me a like if you like the video, give me a like. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you like what you see. It's very appreciative and uh, leave some things in the comments if you've got any ideas about the Seni tri -S kit. I'd like to find out about it because it might be a subject that I might be tempted to try. Um, so yeah, that's that's the inbox review for the Airfix Super Tondard. And if you fancy a model of the Tondard, it's not a bad option in my opinion. I think it's quite good value for money. 
So thanks for watching, lads, and I'll see you again with the next video. Bye-bye.